You might have heard of cirrhosis before, but let's talk a little bit more about what that is and one of the most concerning rising causes of cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is chronic liver disease. Essentially, a variety of causes can result in scarring or fibrosis of the liver. With enough scarring of the liver, eventually it can't carry out its functions properly, and this is called cirrhosis. The liver does a lot of different jobs in the body, and therefore when you have chronic failure of the liver, you have a lot of negative consequences and you get very, very sick. Patients will get confused because toxins build up. They'll develop swelling and fluid in the belly due to fluid imbalances. They'll develop bleeding. They're at higher risk for infections. And even though the liver is known for being able to regenerate, it's not always possible for the liver to get all the way back to normal. However, if the cause of the cirrhosis is fixed, then patients can slow or stop the progression of the scarring and prevent more consequences. Liver cirrhosis can occur from alcohol, genetic diseases, autoimmune diseases, but I want to talk about another cause today, and that's NASH cirrhosis. NASH cirrhosis stands for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. They use that terminology because it's a very similar appearance to what an alcoholic liver disease liver looks like. But we often refer to NASH cirrhosis as fatty liver disease, and that's because it's from long-term inflammation and scarring of the liver due to fat depositing in the liver. And as a result of the obesity epidemic across the country and across the world, chronic liver failure from NASH cirrhosis is becoming more and more common and people are needing liver transplants for this cause of cirrhosis even as young as age 40. Now obesity and NASH cirrhosis don't have a direct one-to-one -one relationship, meaning that everyone that has NASH cirrhosis doesn't actually have to be outwardly obese and everyone who's obese does not automatically have fatty liver disease or NASH. There aren't specific treatments for this right now, but they're being researched. Right now, we recommend that patients eat a healthy diet and maintain consistent exercise to help improve fatty liver. One of the most important things to avoid if you have fatty liver, if you're at risk for fatty liver, is avoiding sugar-sweetened beverages like soda, lemonade, juice, or sweet tea, because all that sugar that doesn't get used gets converted into fat and deposits in the liver. Losing weight by eating healthy and exercising more regularly can help decrease the fat in the liver and decrease inflammation and slow the scarring of the liver. If scarring gets to a certain level, Level, though, often a liver transplant is the only solution. As I said before, prior to getting transplanted, patients with NASH cirrhosis or any type of cirrhosis that's advanced, or as we call it, decompensated, will be dealing with issues ranging from infections to bleeding to confusion to fluid accumulation in the belly. And all of these conditions have medications that help manage them or procedures that help control them, but typically they can't be completely fixed once they develop without either significant improvement in the liver disease or a liver transplant. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.